Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit. Certainly to this great host pastor, our friend and our brother, and to this Mount Zion uh, church family, to all of these fine preachers and pastors, to all of you, uh, my brothers and sisters, it's just good to be standing on the ground, and the ground not standing on us. And uh, thank you, Father, for uh, such a wonderful message. The blood still works. Uh, we've only been given 10 or 12 minutes. You give me 3.2, I'll be out your way. And as they say in Congress, I yield back my time to one of these fine senators. Luke chapter 23, verse 34 simply says, Then Jesus, or correction, did said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. For just this 10 or 12 minutes, I'm going to use this thought to title this text, Being Transformed by the Cross. Being Transformed by the Cross. Beloved, the cross you bear in this life, the things that hang you up, the stuff that kills you, the struggles that cause you to suffer, the agony of being stretched out, the act of being treated like a criminal, being nailed to the thing that's causing you the most pain is really designed to transform you. Many times we miss the transforming power of the cross of the cross in our life because we're so concerned about living problem free. This may sound strange to you, but some problems are good for you. Time will not allow me to dig too deep, but just for a few minutes, can I show you a few things about the transforming power of the cross? As we watch this awesome story unfold tonight, First, we get a glimpse of Christianity at its finest. Verse 33 says, and when they were come to a place which is called Calvary, they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The folk that have just crucified him and hung him high, the text says they up and he utters the words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. Brings me to my first point. First thing I want to need tonight is in order to be transformed by the cross, uh -huh. you're going to have to learn how to forgive. Uh -huh. The same folk who crucified him in verse 33, yeah. he extends them forgiveness in verse 34. Wow. You missed it. The folk who lied on him in verse 33, yeah. he extends forgiveness to them in verse 34. Yeah. You ain't got to check. The folk who have a nail for his hand in verse 33, he extends forgiveness to them in verse 34. You still sitting there. The folk who placed him between two trees in verse 33, he extends to them forgiveness in verse 34. I thought you'd be up by now. The folk who dropped him to the place called Calvary in verse 33, he extends to them forgiveness in verse 34.
folks get out there and witness it. And so, when we are led by the Spirit, I hear the elders, hear the elders, when we are led by the Spirit.
tongues, then you got your life, health, and strength. You got the ability to move and have your being to the angel of this house, brother and friend, the esteemed and distinguished pastor Andre Richardson in the Mount Zion family, to all of these distinguished colleagues of mine. To the pastor Kitty Craig, who already delivered us, uh, amen, we're already on first base. Uh, well, uh, and then we have uh, Tim Davis and Chris Johnson and Ronald Kendrick and Mike Cowan and Frankie Collins and Reginald Perry to bring us home, amen. God is a good God and God is a good God uh, all the time, uh, amen, as the choir sang. And thank you, choir, he's keeping me alive. Uh, I have the awesome task of the second word, amen. Pray for me because God is still working it out. God is a good God, Collins, all the time and in every situation. If I had your hand, I would do it, but I need God to give me his hand, amen. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and to his glory, the word of God declares, Two others who were criminals uh, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came into the place uh, that is called the skull, uh, there they crucified him uh, and the criminals, uh, one on his right uh, and one on his left. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, the word declares today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Uh, there were three men uh, that died that day. They were crucified side by side uh, outside the walls uh, of Jerusalem uh, at a place called Golgotha. Uh, that means the skull hill uh, where the Romans did their killing. Uh, it was located uh, not far from Damascus, uh, Damascus's gate, uh, so that people going into the city would have to see the executioners. Uh, uh -huh. Jesus of Nazareth uh, hangs uh, on the middle cross. Uh, there he is. Uh, two men were crucified with him, uh, one on his right uh, and one on his left. Uh, uh -huh. Who were they, my brothers and sisters? Uh, the translators uh, used different words to describe them, uh, but I believe you will understand. Uh, they said they were thieves, uh, they were robbers, uh, malefactors, uh, bandits. Uh, Luke words means uh, members uh, of the criminal class, uh, you know, professional criminals, uh, members of the underworld. Uh, see, these men were hoods, uh, these men were thugs. Uh, Stormy Daniels, uh, our Lord is called Cohen. Uh, he said, thug, thug, thug. Uh, and that's what these men were. Uh, they were thugs. Uh, uh -huh, they were cutthroat killers. Uh, uh, men who killed for fun uh, and profit uh, and assuasions. Uh, some uh, writers suggest, uh, uh, Copeland, uh, that they were political revolutionaries. Uh, big, big on overthrowing the yoke uh, of Roman rule. Uh, if so, uh, we ought to think of them uh, as terrorists. Uh, you know, like the global war on terrorism? Uh, think about them. Uh, like those uh, who commit atrocities uh, against our land, uh, whether it's in Afghanistan uh, or whether it's in Iraq uh, or whether it's in the Sudan. Uh, they're terrorists uh, and they are no good. Uh, nothing uh, comes out of them uh, but violence uh, to achieve uh, their political aims. Uh, beyond that, uh, sisters and brothers, uh, we know little else uh, about these men. Uh, we do not know their names uh, or their hometowns uh, of the specific crime uh, which they committed. Uh, we assume uh, that they have been partners in crime, uh, but that's not certain. Uh, some suggest uh, they were brothers, uh, but there's no way to be sure. May, may, may. No, they're too mean. Uh, they couldn't be any different. Uh, see, we would not know them uh, at all, uh, except for this. Uh, they are supporting players. Uh, you know, uh, the ball players uh, in the game, uh, but they're in the greatest drama of all time. Uh, uh, the crucifixion uh, of Jesus. Uh, crucifixion. 
perfection. See, it may appear that these two men are exactly alike. Uh, they were both criminals uh, who were sentenced to die together uh, at the same time, uh, at the same place, uh, on the same day. Uh, see, both had been uh, severely beaten uh, before they were crucified. Uh, both were stripped naked uh, before the livery crowd. Uh, both were covered with blood uh, and dirt. Uh, both men were dying uh, and both would soon uh, be dead. Uh, no one could look at them uh, and tell any difference. Uh, but in reality, uh, no two men uh, could be more different. Uh, see, these two men uh, that were crucified uh, on the outer crosses uh, differed uh, on one man's point, uh, how they viewed the man in the middle. Uh, uh, they saw him differently and therefore asked uh, for different things. Uh, how does this mean? Uh, one man wanted to escape, uh, uh, not for forgiveness. Uh, the other man wanted forgiveness, uh, not escape. Uh, uh, there's amazing faith. Uh, let's take a closer look. Uh, let's examine. Uh, let's look at the man who wanted forgiveness. Uh, was any man ever in a more desperate situation? Uh, brutally crucified saints, uh, he is dying in agony for crimes. Uh, he had committed. Uh, he's a guilty man. Uh, justly punished. Uh, he deserves to die. Do any of us deserve to die? Uh, and he knows it. Uh, see, we know we deserve to die. Uh, but praise God, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would we be? Uh, I deserve hell and the grave. Uh, but praise the Lord, God said, grace uh, and mercy. And I won't let you die. Uh, live and not die or to die but God said had no myth in it we deserve to die so by sundown my colleagues he will be dead he ceased from being tried the judgments announced the sentence carried out all purely legal avenues have been exhausted this man is as close to death as you can be and still be alive. Uh, uh, now at the last moment, uh, he makes one final appeal. Uh, he makes the appeal to the Supreme Court uh, of the universe. Uh, he makes the appeal uh, and Jesus, he says, Jesus, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, I submit uh, to this college uh, a bishop sitting here yeah. to submit that, that he was here. We have the most amazing yeah. example of saving faith yeah. in all the Bible. Yeah. See, Jesus is hanging next to him. Yeah. A bloody mess, a, a sight awful to behold. Yeah. The man's feet and arms are nailed yeah. to the cross. A ropes hold his body up yeah. upright so it won't fall off. Yeah. Every movement is agony. Yeah. Every is torture beneath him and behind him the howling mob screams for blood they cheer they mock they sneer they spit they hiss they curse they do everything but blood they roar like wild hyenas how they cheer as he coughs up blood they shout in the pool when someone aims a rock and a piece of tender flesh. It is devilish, it is hellish, brutal, and inhuman. Yet it is here amid the blood and gore that this man comes to faith. Somehow, this thief saw Jesus bleeding and naked, and yet he believed that he would walk and someday come in his kingdom. He saw Jesus at his weakest moment and he still believed in him see he's a crucified sinner trusting in a crucified savior see no man ever looked less like a king than jesus did on that day see it's friday but sunday's coming yet this man saw him as he really was uh, this is made more amazing 
see, when you consider that this man had none of the advantages that the disciples had. See, he also saw Jesus at his weakest moment. As far as we can tell, uh -huh, he never heard Jesus teaching by the seashore. He never saw Jesus heal the sick. We never saw Jesus raise the dead. He knew nothing of Jesus. Great parables and he never saw any of his miracles. Uh -huh, this man missed all the outward signs of Jesus Yet, he believed. Uh, he never did. He knew nothing of the virgin birth. Uh, the Old Testament prophecies. Uh, the conversation with Nicodemus. Uh, you know, uh, you must be born again. Uh, uh, the raising of Lazarus. Uh, just one week earlier in this time. Uh, the coming miracle of the resurrection was unknown to this thief. Uh, he knew nothing about him. Yet there on the cross, he came to understand the heart. Amen. He understood the heart of the Lord. Yet there on the cross, he understood the heart of the gospel. See, in the crucified Christ, Jesus, beaten, mocked, forsaken, his life blood is getting away. This thief saw a king and another crown than the crown of thorns. One crucified man saw another crucified man and he believed in him. That made the difference between heaven and hell. Uh -huh. You look at this man. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. At last, a crucified sinner saints praying to a crucified Savior. See, in that light, his words seem all the more remarkable because Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. By saying that, saints, he didn't mean remember my name or elect a monument to me. He simply meant at the end of the world, make a place for me yeah. in your kingdom. Yeah. See, it is the modest prayer of a man who knows he does not deserve what he's asking for. Yeah. When we put the totality of his words together, we can clearly see how great this man's faith really is. Yeah. See, this man has done nothing wrong. In the person of Christ, yeah. Jesus, remember me. Yeah. Faith in the power of Christ, yeah. Jesus, remember me. Yeah. Faith in the mercy of Christ, yeah. when you come into your kingdom. Yeah. Faith in the kingdom of Christ, yeah. ah, remember me. Yeah. See, what about this prayer? Yeah. See, it is a bit unusual, Travis, but it reminds us that God judges the sincerity of our hearts. Yeah. And not the accuracy of our words. Uh, see, when you go to the doctor, Tim, uh, you don't usually know exactly what medicine you need. Uh, you just need to go to the right doctor and he'll make sure you get the right medicine. See, likewise, this poor dying thief uh, didn't know all the right words to say. Like we sometimes, uh, we don't know the right words. Uh, we don't even have the right words. Uh, but see, our spirit makes intercession for us. Moanings and groanings are encouraged by the Spirit. See, what he said was good enough. Uh, because Kendrick, he said it to the right person. See, when he said, Jesus, remember me, he didn't know all that he was asking for. Before sundown, he received far more than he expected. This thief on the cross was dying for his sins. A guilty man justly punished. He cried out to Jesus at the very last second he was saved. See, there's a promise here. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. There's immediate salvation. There's personal salvation. There's heavenly salvation. See, heaven is where Jesus is. See, paradise is a crucial word. Scholars tell us it's originally referred to the wall. Gardens 
of the Persian kings. When a king wanted to honor his subject, he would invite him to walk with him in his garden in the cool of the day. This is the same Greek word that was used in the Old Testament to refer to the garden of Eden. It's a place of beauty, openness, inexpressible blessedness. If we take these three promises together, we can see that remarkable thing Jesus is saying. He's promising that this thief who has lived his entire life in crime will upon his death be transferred to heaven where he will be in the personal presence of Jesus the Christ. Wow. Truly, this thief received much more than he asked for. Yeah. And my brothers and my sisters, yes, sir. the lessons of hope and encouragement. Uh -huh. It is never too late to turn to Christ. It is never too late to turn to Christ. Even the very worst can be saved at the very last moment. People who live their way are not serious about salvation. He has pardoned before he lived a single righteous day. So God has made salvation simple so that anyone can be saved. Consider what we have in this story. Salvation in the kingdom of the sacraments. This man was never baptized, never took the Lord's supper. And never went to confession. But he made it to heaven. See, salvation is independent of the church's here. This man never went to church, never walked it out, never attended any catechism classes, never gave his money. Although his money was funny and his change was strange, ah, but he made it to heaven. Salvation is independent of any good works. This man could not lift the hand. For his hands were nailed to a cross. He would not run away errands for the Lord, for his feet were nailed to a cross. He could not give his money, for he had not a penny to his name. For this man, there was no way but the mercy of God. My brothers and my sisters, there is still time. All that God wants from us and all that God will accept is simple faith. Someone who's dear to my heart, he is a product of Mount Zion Baptist Church, having been raised in the church. I remember when I was a teenager playing the piano, he was a little boy singing in the choir. And then back in the, and on the way, the Lord sent him back home to begin his ministry of the gospel. And uh, we're very proud of the fact that he has moved on through his life and allowed God to lead him. And now he's the proud pastor of the Greater Hope, Miss yeah. Ann Baptist Church, Murray, Kentucky. Pastor Timothy Davis, amen, uh, is a man of God here to preach God's word. We're not going to be heavy on the introduction, but I am proud of the work I see God doing in him, first of all, and then through him. Don't, don't miss that. See, before God can do a work through you, he's got to do a work in you. And I thank God for I see the work that God has done in this man. Amen. And now I see the work God is doing through this man. Why don't you say amen? amen. As the great hope choir prepares themselves and comes to the choir stand, let us receive him by the elevation of our right hand and call it in name, Pastor Timothy Davis. Amen. Preach God's word. We need a word. We will hear you.
just a blessing to be here on this day. Listen, I promise you, I won't hold you long. I'm going to say my little Easter speech. I promise you, there's some heavy hitters right here. I'm getting ready to get out of the way, but there is a word found in the Gospel according to John, chapter 19. Start at the 26th verse and read verse 26 and 27. Thank God for the Red Hope Choir. Yeah. And every choir is represented in this house. John chapter 19, verse 26 says, When therefore, when Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Yeah, yeah. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his home. Do me a favor, look at a neighbor and tell him these words. Neighbor, with care, concern, and compassion. My sisters and brothers, whether you realize it or not, at some point in this life, all of us will go through some kind of crisis. You might as well get ready. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, poor, rich, educated, uneducated, Jew or Gentile. Everybody in this life will experience some sort of crisis. It's just that simple. You might as well not think that you're going to be always living on green grass. Life is going to get tough sometimes. Just like you experience the good in life, I promise you, you will be acquainted with the bad side of life. I know how we are. We love, we appreciate, and we embrace the sweet side of life. But how many folk in here know that life always has a way of giving us a sour side? It's just something about living in this world. Life will bring us some things that just taste bitter. Life can be plain rock. And it's guaranteed to make you cry every now and then. Listen, y'all, if Jesus had, if he had a crown of thorns pressed on his head, you're going to have a headache every once in a while. We will have a life that has trouble, pain, and stress. Job 14 and 1 says, man that is born of a woman is a few days. And those few days are full of trouble. When we look at this text, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, He's on the cross. Yeah, yeah. He's hanging. Yeah. He's suffering. Yeah. He's dying for your sins and for my sins. Yeah, yeah. At this point, at the end of his life, he was in a crucial, crippling, and critical crisis. Ooh, right. He was in a distressed, damn, doomed, and almost dead moment. Yes, I don't have time to break this down. Yes, Pastor Craig and Pastor Daniel have done a wonderful job. Yeah, yeah. That I could take, but I want to quickly highlight some things about this third saying. The first thing I immediately saw at this point in Jesus' life is that Jesus suffered for all of us. <laughs> Somebody say suffer. We need to remember that our Lord and our Christ suffered on a cross. Yeah. He was mocked, he was mauled, he was mangled, he was beaten, he yeah. was bashed, yeah. he was battered, yeah. dishonored, disrespected, and disgraced. Yeah. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And we need to remember that Jesus suffered, and out of all of this suffering that he endured, he still took time to have some sympathy and love for his family, even though he was in personal pain. He's going through some unbelievable pain, but still our Lord takes time to have sympathy on other folks. Yeah, yeah. He had a mother there, 
who was witnessing this devastating disaster of her child being murdered. Yeah. The crowd is taunting him. Yeah. The thieves are ridiculing him. Uh -huh. The priests are expressing their disapproval of him. Yeah. The soldiers are cold-hearted and cold-blooded. Yeah. And the yeah. Savior is suffering, bleeding, and dying. Yeah. Right there at the foot of the cross stood his mother and a few other folks. Yeah. Yeah. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there to look at this horrific scene of her innocent child being slaughtered. Yeah. She can't do anything. All she can do is look at it. She is powerless over this injustice that's killing her baby. Right. This is heartbreaking because in a perfect world, children are supposed to bury their parents. Yeah. Parents are not supposed right. Right. to bury their children. Right. And here this mother has to bear the burden of burying a child who is hanging on an old rugged cross. Yeah.
from God, which caused 
his humanity to cry out, my God, my God. Yeah. But God the Father was still right there. Yeah. God is still close enough. So when man messes up and allows sin to spiritually separate them from God, man can repent. God will forgive and God will set the record straight because he's always around. Right. Whether shall I go from that spirit? Or whether shall I flee from that presence? Well, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Where can he go? God is always there. God didn't stop being God because his son was hanging on a cross. God is still the same today as he was on yesterday and he will always be can you tell me when God has ever left you when has God ever turned his back on you I don't believe anybody in here can say no matter how bad I got no matter the things that I did in my life God has never turned his back on me I got four or five witnesses that can testify and when I was going to get that
soul. Amen. We serve a God who is worthy to be praised. And I don't know about you, but I get excited at this time of the year. Amen. Amen. When I think about the goodness of Jesus. Anybody thank God he died for you? Come on, somebody. Somebody can say, I used to be a sinner. But because of the change, God, the power of the blood. Anybody know anything about the blood? It's something about the blood of oh, Jesus. Amen to Pastor Richardson, to all of these pastors and preachers in the house, to all of you, it's good to be here again. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord coming from the gospel according to St. John chapter 19, verses 28 and 29. There you will find these words. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I heard. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. I heard. My brothers and sisters, here, when we look at Calvary, here Jesus is hanging on the old rugged cross. Uh, here in this fifth saying of Jesus on Calvary Cross Church, Jesus cries out the words, I heard. As our Savior hangs on the cross, church, he has suffered so much physical and emotional pain. Uh, can I suggest to you that when you look at the simple troubles we go through, how many know none of us face what Jesus went through? Do I got a witness? You see, church, understand that our Lord and Savior, who is so physically weak, he cries out of this phrase, out of desperation. This is the same one who made several statements in scripture concerning that of water. You remember, church, in the gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 14, church, it was Jesus that stated, whoever drinks of the water, that I will give him shall never thirst. Will become in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. But now here it is on the cross, the cross of suffering and shame, that Jesus cries out, I thirst. For three years of his life, church, he has poured out so many times to people, but now here he is crying out himself. A tough pill to swallow. Yes, but church, before we go too deep within this message, we need to know what is meant by the word thirst. Right. Thirst is simply a sensation of dryness in the mouth and throat caused by a desperate need of liquid. Uh -huh. It is the idea of one needing moisture for hydration. Tonight, church, when we look at this fifth word of Jesus on the cross, I thirst, there are a couple of points or perspectives that need to be lifted. First of all, in looking at this statement, we must understand that it speaks of Jesus' humanity. First of all, church, when you look at Jesus, you do know that the scriptures declares he was 100% God and 100% man. In other words, church, he, he experienced some stuff that you and I experience today. Yeah. You see, even though he was Jesus, 
He was the son of God, church. He was just as much as human. And all that Jesus went through, church, before this moment of the fifth saying, he was physically a man. I know, I know, we look at Jesus as the son of God, but have you ever noticed in the scripture he's called the son of man? But church, watch this church. It started in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, you do know that Gethsemane means all of press. You do know that every now and then in life you got to be pressed. How many know that? See, see, watch this church. Some of us want to go to hell and pray. of blood. This condition is the result of a medical term called hemotrigosis, which happens when someone is under great stress because they know they are about ready to die. Church, because of this stress and anxiety, church, tiny blood vessels begin to burst. Blood then is brought to the surface with sweat appearing and being in the form of droplets of blood. Church, I tell you tonight, he was in agony. Uh -huh. But church, when you look at this church, this, this condition called hemotridrosis, church leaves the skin extremely sensitive. Uh -huh. Just the simplest pressure on the skin can result in excruciating pain. Church, I'm talking about your Savior and my Lord. Uh -huh. Those suffering from hemotridrosis often scream in agony at the slightest touch because their skin is so sensitive. Yeah, well. But church, not only did he suffer extreme stress and pressure, not only did Jesus sweat as great drops of blood, but as a human, he was also scorched, which was one of the most terrible tortures there was. Uh, church, when you look at a church, when a person was scorched, they were tied naked to a pole and whipped several times. Church, the Romans used a flagellum to do the scorching. Church, this was a wooden handle with cords of rawhide attached to it, such as lead. It was filled with bone, glass, and spikes which were attached to the end, arrayed in a dumbbell shape pattern. Church, they did our Lord and Savior wrong. Yeah. But church, when you look at it, how many know he never said a mumbling word? Yeah. He didn't cuss them out. He didn't call them everything under the sun. But he just called on God to do what God was going to do. Yeah. Over a series of beatings, church, in a midst of blood, and blood would cover the body around the victim. The victim was soon unrecognizable. Church, Jesus hollered out, I thirst. But then church finally and looking at his humanity, time will not permit me to talk about the thorns that was placed around Jesus' head. Church, when you look at the church, there was a crown of thorns pushed down on his head. Church, it was to mock him as being a king. But church, how many know that he was a true king? Church, time will not permit me to deal with the sweat loss from the heaviness of the cross that Jesus bore as they led him up to Calvary's heel. Time will not permit me to deal with the fact of how every time he would fall, the trauma to his heart would cause so much damage. But church, I never said you went through so much. Church, after he was stripped, well, Jesus was laid down on the patel building, which was the crossbar of the cross. Church, when you look at it, church, he had seven inch nails driven through his wrists. But understand, church, the nails, when you look at it, church, went through the wrists. 
Jesus was real deep. But I stopped by to tell you, he never said a mumbling word. But finally, as I get ready to take my seat today, there was another perspective that I want to cover. Church, when you look at it, church, he had to deal with prophecy. Yeah, when you look at it, church, in Psalm, no, in Psalm 69 and 21, the scripture declared, they gave me gall for my meat. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. And I stopped by to tell you, church, he was a fulfillment of prophecy. But uh, I want to close tonight. Can I tell you that uh, that means something for you and I tonight? Because when you look at it, church, uh, I stop by to tell you that every now and then uh, we get tired on this journey.
Y'all still with us? Amen. We, we, we on our way. Amen. We're not going to prolong it. We're going to get right to it. I'm going to need the word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. At this time, we're going to go into our sixth word. Amen. The sixth of seven last words of Christ. And our sixth word. It is finished. Our preacher for tonight tells to us from the church of the living God. Temple number 347. He is a man of God who can stand tall and preach God's word. This is his third go around with us on the seven last sayings. We appreciate him, we love him. He's our, he's our relative, our cousin, amen. But with all of that being said, he's a man of God who can preach God's word. For us tonight to preach, the Lord Mike Howard is coming to preach the fifth word. It is finished. Mm -hmm. Let us receive him by the elevation of his right hand and call him his name. Pastor Coward, preach God's word. We will hear you and obey.
I'm charged with doing the last, or one of the last, it is finished. But I want to look at it another way to say it is finished, but it's not over. John 19 and 30 said, When Jesus therefore had received the benefit, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus, knowing that all things would now come, said, I thirst. And then it is finished. That is to say, there is something in that dying voice, a great deep deal deeper and more wonderful than the original human utterance, which with a dying man might say, it is all over now. Uh -huh. I have done all I can do. Yeah. Yeah. For this order has come from the conscience that all things have been accomplished by him and that he had done his life's work. All right. My brothers and my sisters, for the most part, the word it is finished means I have done, I have came as far as I'm willing to go. Right. I have been through all that I am willing to deal with in my life. My ups and my downs, my hardships, yeah. and my sickness and disappointments, yeah. and my failures. Yeah. I have came to the end of my life, and I feel I can't go through no more. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, preach up. Church, let me ask you a question if I can. All right. All right. Has there ever been a time in your life you look around and say, it? something to drink and they gave him milk. Yeah. And when Jesus therefore had received the milk, he said, he said, it is finished. Yeah. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. We need to understand that at the cross, uh -huh. none is more important or more touching than it is finished. Yeah. All right. Found only in the Gospel of John. Yeah. When Jesus uttered these words, he was declaring that the death all to his father was wiped away completely and forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that Jesus wiped away any debt that he owed to the father. Well, Rather, Jesus eliminated the debt owed by mankind. Yeah, yeah. We do understand what that debt is, yeah, yeah. We do understand that that debt was sins of man. Yeah, yeah. Why he hung on the cross, it was finished because he had done his earthly job. He had took away all the sins of the world. Not just the sins of the folks that were dead, yeah. but the sins of all of us sitting yeah. here today. Yeah. We are here because of what he did yeah. out on Calvary. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, aren't you glad today yeah. that Jesus stood in the gap for you and for me? Yeah. That yeah. Jesus came down yeah. 40 and two generations. Yeah. Yeah. For you and for me. Yeah. The Gospel of John makes it explicit. Makes explicit what all the Gospels assume. Yeah. Uh, that is, the cross is not a defeat, mm. but the victory of our God. Yeah. Oh, for some of us, that should be good news. That it is not a defeat, but it was a victory. Yeah. And I will glorify you again. Yeah. John 17 
16 and 4 says, yes. I have glorified thee on the earth. Yes. I have finished the work which thou did to me. Yes. And do I, it is finished. Let me explain something. When he said it's finished, mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus did some things while he was here. Yeah. Uh, did he, sure. he heal the sick? Yeah.
forgiveness for us. Yes, Knowing that God wants us to feel the same way about our lives yes, as our lives are in it. Well done, good, and faithful, sir. Yes, it is finished. God will has accomplished through life. You have fought a good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. 